So now let's see a, a simple, a very simple example that how we can use gradient descent uh, to find out the minimal value of a given function. So the function here we are going to talking about is this one. So x squared um, is a very simple function. And the gradient function <coughs> of x squared is similar to the derivative because uh, it has just one variable, so that is two multiple x. Okay, so now I'm asking, so what is the minimal value of this function? And so if you know that, the mean, uh, if you still remember from, I'm not sure, high school, um, the minimal function of the minimal value of this function is zero. Okay, because you cannot have a value that is uh, below zero for this function. So this function does has a minimal function, and that minimal function is zero. So here, oh, those are the steps. So first, we choose the step value. Uh, so here, I just randomly selected point two as a as a step value. So we are using now we are using a constant step. So each single time, we just move the same step, but we are moving along the direction of the. Uh, gradient function that gives how to be more precise the opposite direction of the gradient function all right so uh, first we randomly select a starting point so let's say we choose point negative nine so that is a random starting point <clears throat> and we multiply the direction the opposite direction actually. So you see that that is a, a gradient function. Uh, so we have the slope and then we multiply the step. So that means that how far away we need to move. And this one together is uh, positive 3.6. So that is the, the distance we should move towards and also it also tells the direction. And and plus the starting point. So now we know that the next point, the next step will be negative 5.4. And then we bring this one to our second step. And again, we calculate the um, uh, di slope, so which is using the opposite direction of the gradient function, and also times the step. And we know which direction we should move and also how far away we should move. So we're starting from this point and we move and we have our third point. And then we move, put our third point as uh, the start starting direction, uh, get the direction of the second move and also see how far we should move. So we have the distance and the direction and plus the original position of the third point and we have our new point. And then we can continue. So we can continue this one, this one multiple times. Uh, so if you look at on the chart, and we can see the blue one is our original function. So the first point uh, is something around here. So probably this one. And we took this direction. And next we go to this, um, probably around this one. So that is our third, second point. And we took this direction, and we go to this point, and we took this direction, and next you can see we are going close, close, close to this um, minimal value. And if we put all the steps and also future steps on the chart, we can see that we're starting from negative nine and also negative four point five point four, uh, negative three point two four, and this and this. And now you can see we are approaching to zero, so which is the minimal value of this function. Okay, uh, so that is how we can use Grinton descent to find out the maximum value and also the minimal value of a function. Uh, so when we are using Grinton descent, so we have to be careful that uh, you may wonder, okay, this function is very simple, so why do you need this one? So, uh, yeah, this is function is very, very simple. Um, however, in some cases, the function may have multiple variables, and the function is very, very complicated. 
Uh, so you cannot find out, you cannot see the minimum or ma maximum function directly. In that case, the gradient descent will be very, very helpful. Uh, however, so in the scenario where we are calculating or where, where we are handling the uh, very complicated functions, um, so it might be the case that the function has a local minimal and also a global minimal. Okay, so for example, in this case, um, <coughs> it has just a global minimal. And so if we start, let's say, um, from here and also move a little bit, move a little bit, move a little bit, and we can reach uh, the local minimal or the global minimal. However, for this function on the right side, so it has a the global minimal and also it has a local minimal. Okay, uh, so here we have a problem. So that means that how we should choose the step. Okay. So in the previous scenario, uh, we choose step is 0.2. So we choose the constant step. Okay. Uh, so the choosing the right step is very, very important. So if we choose the step is very, very big, and say in this case, we choose the step like here, and then if I use the same step, then we go too far away and we go here. So we just randomly bound within this function, so we can never reach the global minimal. Okay, so if the function has a global minimal, or if the function has a minimal, a local minimal, if the step size is too big, then we will, not, we will never reach that minimal. So the step size should not be too big. However, if the step size is too small, so like here we move a very little bit and once we reach this local minimal and we will not get outside we will not go, we will not get out of the uh, local minimal so we should not choose a, a step to be too small okay so we need to find out the uh, ideal step size that we can can help us to reach the minimal global minimal but can also help us to, to avoid the local minimum. Okay, so choosing the right step size is very, very important. And so that's why that in most machine learning models, uh, you have three um, approach that can define the step size. So you can use a fixed step size. So that one that we used in our example and fortunately, in our example, we are we were able to reach the minimal. So that is one option. But uh, it, so by using a fixed step size, so if your step size is too small, you may reach the uh, you may get trapped at the local minimal. If the step is too big, you may never reach the minimal. So you may never reach global or local minimal. So so that's the problem of using a fixed step size. But it's very simple to set. You can also choose the approach that you can gradually shrink in the step size over time. So uh, if you remember that, so that means for at the beginning, your step size will be very big, and but your step size will become small and small and small as, as long as you go further. So that will help you to reach ratio minimal. Or you can choose a step size that um, different at each single step. So at each step, you will calculate the step size, and that step, step size will minimize the value of this object function. So this is this will be very, very complicated. Um, and so that will require a huge, um, uh, very fast computer, uh, computer, so that because you will do a lot of calculations. So you will do a calculation at each single step. Okay, so those are very different steps, different approaches that you can choose um, to, to set your step size. Okay, um, and finally, uh, the SJD, so stochastic gradient descent. Stochastic 
gradient descent. That is the real approach that you will see a lot in machine learning models. So we have spent like uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes talking about this very, very complicated mathematic approach. But the final objective of those, those two lectures is really to introduce this uh, stochastic gradient descent, because we will see that one a lot in the machine learning models. Um, so basically, the idea is that we're using the gradient descent to choose the parameters of the model that can minimize our errors. OK, so that can minimize the error. So we the SGD is, is still using gradient descent to choose the parameters of a model. So like uh, you will see example that in later in the, uh, in the next uh, lecture. So, so the way that we use that one is to minimize errors of our models. And uh, SGD will compute the gradient for only one point at a time and also take a step. So just as we did in our example. However, it will not calculate all the uh, data point because the sample size will be very huge. It only circle over our data randomly until we reach a stop point. So for example, if that is a function, so it probably will do like this, and finally it will reach the minimum. Okay, so it will circle over the, your samples and to reach the minimum. And however, this approach leaves the possibility that we may circle around the, mi the minimal forever. So when we stop getting improvement, we should either decrease the step size, uh, uh, we should use a small step size, or we just quit. Okay, so for example, if we have a, a, a model like this, and we might get trapped uh, <coughs> at, the, at the local minimal, so that is possible by using the uh, SJD function. So the benefit of this one is it is faster. Okay, it is faster to get the parameters and minimize the errors. The disadvantage is that the, you may not get the best. Okay, you may not get the best parameters. Okay, so you can get the result very, very faster, but you may not get the best parameters. Okay, so just reminder those words. <laughs> The this slide from now and it will make more sense as long as when we go through the real models later and uh, the, the real objective is that I wish you can feel comfort when you see this terminology later so you can get a very very general idea that what they are talking about.